Hi, Jonathan. It started OMA. This is part of our reference collection of horn loudspeakers. Maybe a good time to answer the question, what is a horn and, and how does it work? It, horns seem to be very simple. They're actually both simple and extremely complex. Ultimately though, they are a device that increases the amount of sound from the source. With audio, we often talk about amplifiers, amplification. That's not what a horn does. A horn does not amplify sound. What it does is it increases the amount of sound and affects the sound that, that from the source. So a good way to understand this is by thinking about what sound is in the first place. And sound is energy. It's energy that moves in waves. So if we think about, for example, say a puddle or a pond or a very still body of water, and we take a pebble, we throw it into that, that, that still body of water, we see these waves rippling outwards concentrically. And sound operates exactly in that same way. Now, let's bring this home, okay. So with sound, what we need is, is a loudspeaker so we can increase the sound to, to change it from the electrical signal into waves that we can hear with our ears and our bodies. And to do that, a uh, loudspeaker has a, a, a transducer that moves, and that could be in a box. And in fact, my, my head is, is kind of like a regular loudspeaker. Just imagine that this is a box, right? And that my mouth is kind of like uh, the cone woofer. Okay, so I'm talking to you, and you're hearing what I'm saying, and the sound is coming out of my mouth. It's also, besides going to you, it's going to the floor, it's going to the walls, it's going to the ceiling, and it's bouncing around everywhere. Now, if I start to move around and I go back here, but I, I keep talking at the same volume. Well, of course, the microphone is on my shirt, so you hear the same thing, but you can imagine that you wouldn't hear the same thing, that, that the sound would drop off. And that's a problem because now, what you're hearing is actually more reflected sound uh, than direct sound. And the further and further back I get, the more you hear these echoes and reverberations and the worse the sound quality is. Horns are an extremely efficient way to take energy in the form of sound and transmit it to the surrounding air and they not only do it more efficiently so that the sound is a lot lower, but they also direct the sound where you want it to go. Those are two super important things to keep in mind when it comes to horns, when it comes to, to audio. Now, with, with musical instruments, right, we all know horns, trumpets, trombones, tubas, they're incredibly loud. They take the air coming out of the human body and they make it super, super loud. That's because they're coupling the air that's coming out of like Louis Armstrong's mouth, right? And into a tube and that coupling is super efficient. If I talk into this gramophone horn, which has this little orifice here, this little, this little throat with a big mouth, I'm really low. But it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't sound right because there's this constriction here and that constriction, like in a, in a trombone or in a trumpet, will, will create a coloration in the sound. And that's what you want with a trumpet or a trombone or any of the horns. You're looking for that sound quality. That's why you have different horns. In, in a band or in an orchestra. But when you're doing audio, reproducing music, you want to have as little coloration as possible. You want the most neutral sound possible. And it turns out that the best way to do that is not to have any kind of constriction, any kind of closing down at the beginning of the horn. 
it's to have it be as open as possible. All of these horns, which cover almost over a hundred years of, of audio technology, you'll notice that virtually all of them, they have this curvature to them. Right? This is an exponential horn. There's many types. There's parabolic, hyperbolic, tractrix, lecleach, and so forth. So they all have a curve. And each one of them, because of that curvature, has a specific sound quality and characteristics about how the horn operates. For example, at a certain point, as the frequency goes up, the sound that's coming in here, it no longer sees the walls of the horn. It's, it's like, where am I? And it, it beams. And when it beams, it's not being loaded by the horn anymore. And at that point, if you're not on axis with, with the thing, you're not hearing everything. Now, there's a type of horn that's very different from this curved horn group of uh, family of horns, and that is the conical horn. This actually is a conical shape until you get to here. This is all, this little horn that we make, the small horn, is conical, straight sides. And what happens with a conical horn is very, very interesting that as long as um, the, the network is keeping the frequency within the range that the horn was designed, in other words, that the horn is being loaded, that the sound comes out of this perfectly evenly wherever it's, it's being sent. So there is no beaming. That's called constant directivity. And that turns out to be a really important aspect of natural sound reproduction. So that what you don't hear is like, a horn, what you hear is just the music that's on your record, your CD, your streaming DAC device, or whatever. And that's why we use only conical profile horns in our loudspeakers, unlike all these horns. Now these, again, these were all designed to be as, as natural and lifelike as possible. The thing is, is they still had, for example, size constraints. So, you know, the, the, the engineers at RCA, the marketing department said, well, look, we need to get this stuff behind the screen in a movie theater. And sometimes those space between the screen and the back wall isn't very much. We can't have a huge horn. So they made them as short as possible. For OMA, we don't have those constraints. We just design the horns based upon what we think is going to be the best possible sound quality given the package that we're trying to achieve. I hope that explains something about how horns operate, why we do what we do. Um, maybe a, a little talk about efficiency would be a good idea next.